On April 1st of this year, the NBA and its players agreed to a new collective bargaining agreement. The announcement of this new CBA broke news for about a day or two, and then it was shrugged off in the midst of the regular season. For the most part, it's a bunch of contract jargon, new financial structuring and incentives, nuanced agreements between owners and players that us fans couldn't care less about. But built into the details of this fairly routine league adjustment are three major rule changes to how the NBA will operate. Three adjustments to rules, systems, awards, and honors that have been in place for decades and will change the way the NBA and its players navigate the season. Today's sponsor is HelloFresh. Brothers, it's 2023. Does anyone really have time to be cruising around the grocery store spending way too much money on meals that should have been retired years ago? Absolutely not. Time is money and shopping around wastes a whole lot of both. But HelloFresh is here to change all of that. HelloFresh takes the hassle out of mealtime this spring by delivering pre-portioned ingredients and easy to prepare recipes right to your door. Skip the checkout lines and get outside in the warmer weather because HelloFresh has dinner covered. With 40 recipes and over 100 seasonal and convenience items to choose from each week, there are options for everyone and every lifestyle. A convenience that will actually save you money since HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% cheaper than takeout. Guys, I can't cook, but with HelloFresh's foolproof pre-portioned recipes, I am a Michelin-starred chef. But HelloFresh isn't just for dinner. From snacks to easy lunches to seasonal celebrations and gatherings, they've got you covered. And right now, HelloFresh is offering 16 free meals with free shipping when you use code JimmyHighRoller16 at sign up. Take advantage of this killer deal. Head over to HelloFresh and use code JimmyHighRoller16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Coming into effect starting with the 2023-2024 NBA season, the league has a new CBA. Among the slosh of financial mumbo jumbo that I couldn't give a rat's ass about, there are three major changes taking place from this season forward. The first one is a new rule regarding the minimum number of games a player must play to receive individual awards and or be eligible for all NBA team selection. Previously, this threshold was 58 games, or about 70% of the season. But under the new CBA rules, a player now must play at least 65 games in a season to qualify for all awards and honors. The overarching goal of this change being to reduce the amount of load management around the league. And surely, this change will do just that. Over the last three seasons, of the 45 players who were selected to an All-NBA team, 15 of them wouldn't have even qualified under the new rules. In fact, LeBron James would have missed the cut in all of the last three seasons. And 15 superstars not playing enough games over the course of three seasons may not sound like much, until you realize that in the previous 19 seasons combined, only 15 players made all NBA teams without playing at least 70% of the season. A requirement that pushes for about 10% more games played throughout a season for every superstar around the league may have a larger impact on the game than you would think. Which leads Ben Rohrbach of Yahoo Sports to beg the question, is it worth squeezing a handful more games from these stars to risk rewarding less prestigious candidates? Yes, absolutely. And this minimum game requirement will also be in effect for individual awards, such as the MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, Rookie of the Year, and so on. The minimum game requirement here will have less of an effect on the league since voters are already in a silent agreement that in order to be the best at anything, you have to play most of the games. This is the exact reason why, excluding shortened seasons, there's only been two MVP recipients that played less than 70 games since the league moved to the 82-game schedule in 1968. Bill Walton in 1978, and Joel Embiid just this past season. But still, we will inevitably see this new rule begin to change the way stars around the league navigate each season. Over the past decade, here are award winners that, under the new rules, wouldn't have even been eligible, including Jaron Jackson Jr. for Defensive Player of the Year in 2023. Now, the one caveat to this rule change is that there will be exceptions under specific circumstances. For example, if a player has a season-ending injury, the minimum game requirement will drop from 65 to 62 games. Also, any game where a player plays at least 20 minutes will count as a game played. And I think we can all see exactly how this exception will be exploited. And to demonstrate this, I want to point y'all to AC Green. 
Throughout the 80s and 90s, Green was a solid contributor in the NBA, but his legacy is remembered for his untouchable record for consecutive games played in an NBA career. From 1986 to 2001, A.C. Green did not miss a single basketball game. Not one. 1,192 consecutive games over the course of 16 years. A record that, I'd be willing to bet anything, will never be broken for the rest of time. But what people fail to mention is that in order to set this record, AC Green had numerous games where he would simply check into the game for a few possessions and then check back out. The man was well aware of his streak, and he would do anything in his power to keep it going until the day he retired. It's not a matter of if stars around the league will check into a game and then inexplicably check back out after 21 minutes, it's a matter of how many stars will do this and how often. But this rule change is certainly a step in the right direction. Now the next rule change that was included in the new CBA is one that fans have been asking for for years. The NBA has become a positionless league. Is Steph Curry a point guard or is he really a shooting guard? Probably a little bit of both. Is Jimmy Butler a power forward? Of course not. And yet he's listed as one. If you look up the words shooting guard in the dictionary, you'll find a picture of Klay Thompson. And yet he's listed as a small forward. Positions don't matter. And the NBA is finally taking notice of this starting next season and the way that they vote for all NBA teams. Because from this upcoming season forward, all NBA teams will no longer be restricted to two guards, two forwards, and a center. Instead, all NBA teams will be positionless. The five players who receive the most first place votes will simply be first team all NBA. Players who earn the sixth through 10th most votes will be second team all NBA, and 11th through 15th will be named third team all NBA. This change in the structure of how all NBA teams are chosen will fundamentally change the contractual leverage of players around the league and the legacy they leave behind. This past season, Nikola Jokic, the best player in the world, didn't even make first team all NBA. Only one center is allowed to make first team and that spot went to Joel Embiid. Rudy Gobert has four all NBA selections in his career. You wanna know how many all NBA teams Vince Carter made in his 22 year career? Two. I know, right? Guess how many All-NBA teams Ray Allen has made in his career? Two. What about Dennis Rodman? You guessed it. Two. In fact, Rudy Gobert has more career All-NBA selections than Vince Carter, Ray Allen, Dennis Rodman, DeMarcus Cousins, Manu Ginobili, Draymond Green, Kevin Love, Alonzo Mourning, Klay Thompson, Bill Walton, James Worthy, Devin Booker, Chris Bosh, Kevin McHale, Earl Monroe, Derrick Rose, and Peja Stojakovic. Appalling. The old All-NBA voting system was broken, and it had been for years. But the most egregious case of this failed voting system came back in 2016, when DeAndre Jordan, who was never at any point in his career even considered a top 30 player in the league, made first team All-NBA. That's right. Because of this voting system, DeAndre Jordan was virtually named a top five player in the NBA. That same season, Kevin Durant, at his apex, did not make first team All-NBA. Change was in need. And to demonstrate just how much these alterations will affect the NBA, here are the All-NBA teams from 2023. Now, considering the new minimum game requirements and the positionless voting, this is how the 2023 All-NBA teams would look under the new rules according to voting results. Giannis, Steph, Butler, Lillard, and LeBron all miss too many games to make the cut. Jokic makes first team with Embiid, Sabonis, Fox, and Randall all get promoted to second team, and four players in Markkanen, Holiday, Brunson, and Anthony Edwards all make their first All-NBA team. Now, the last major change that we'll see in this upcoming season is the new in-season tournament. No official structure of the tournament has been announced yet, but the basic framework is set. And it'll look something like this. The league will be divided into six pools of five teams. Pools will be compromised of teams from the same conference. And that's about the extent of this plan making any sense. Because out of the established pools of teams, there will be designated days during the first six weeks of the season where teams will play within their pool. The winner of each six pools will advance to a single elimination stage along with two wildcard teams. The league has yet to announce how these wildcard teams will be determined, so maybe record? The semifinals and finals will be played at a neutral site, and the players on the winning tournament team will receive $500,000 each. But here's where it gets really weird. 
Each NBA team will only be scheduled for 80 games on the season. Teams that do not advance to the knockout round of the tournament will have two games added to their schedule, and the teams that make the final round of the tournament will play 83 total games. So let me get this straight. This new in-season tournament will affect the scheduling of the regular season. It will have qualifying rounds built throughout the season. It will lead to some teams playing more games in a season than others, but most importantly, I don't know if anyone's even gonna care. The teams that are already good might not care about the in-season tournament because they have bigger goals. And the teams that have no chance at contending for a championship and might care to win the tournament probably won't have a shot. I think the single elimination format could work in favor of less capable teams, but are the title contenders for the postseason not also the same teams that will be favored to win the in-season tournament? Will the rich not just get richer while bad teams continue to have no shot at winning anything? Over the last decade, the NBA has added a handful of new awards that players can win throughout the season. The Hustle Award, Teammate of the Year Award, Clutch Player of the Year, Eastern and Western Conference MVPs. These extra awards get more players and fan bases involved. But if we're being completely honest, no one really cares about these additive accolades. Who won the Hustle Award in 2020? Who won the Teammate of the Year Award in 2021? Similar to these secondary awards, I think the midseason tournament could be a fun detour from the regular season, but I'm not sure how much value or even importance it will hold, especially considering it will uproot the entire structure of the regular season. But what do y'all think? Do you like the changes coming to the NBA? If you had the power, what changes would you make? If the five best players in the league are five point guards, does it make sense to have them all first team all NBA? What if the 10 best players in the league all play less than 65 games? Would it really make sense to have the 11th most valuable player in the NBA win the MVP? How does Rudy freaking Gobert have more all NBA selections than Vince Carter? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, until next time.